the inequality u square bar is greater or equal to u bar square. Suppose that the variable u can assume the possible values u r with respective probabilities p r. By using the definitions of u bar and u square bar and remembering the normalization requirement, uh, show that u square bar minus u bar square is given by this expression i where each sum extends over all possible values of the variable u. Since no term in the sum can ever be negative, show that u square bar must be greater or equal to u bar square, where the equals sign applies only in the case where only one value of u occurs with non-zero probability. The result agrees with that derived in problem 2.8. Okay, <clears throat> so let's start with the definitions of u bar and u bar squared. So what is the definition of u bar? The mean value of u is defined as sum over all possible values of u uh, with so we have u sub r multiplied with p sub r with the corresponding uh, respective probabilities we multiply u sub r with p sub r and sum over all possible uh, values of u. Okay, so uh, r index basically goes through all possible values of, uh, counts all possible values of u. Now, <clears throat> so uh, u square bar on the other hand is by definition sum over r p r u r squared so and this is also true for any function of uh, u remember the mean value is uh, the sum over uh, pr sum over r pr f of u r so we're using this basically and the normalization condition that we are referring to is the sum over r PR, if you go through all possible values, then the probabilities should add up to 1. So this is our normalization condition. Okay, so uh, we're working with this uh, difference, a u square bar minus u bar squared. So I'm going to apply the definition of u square bar. Therefore, I can write sum over r pr u r squared for the mean value of u squared. And for the mean value of u, I substitute sum over r pr u r. And it's multiplied with itself so that I get the square sum over s p s u s while s goes through all possible uh, s is the index for all possible values of u so you ha ca can have possible values u0 u1 u2 u3 etc up to the u sub maximum value of s okay now uh, what i'm going to do is uh, multiply the first term with the normalization condition so sum over s p s where s goes through all possible uh, all possibilities and this multiplied with sum over r p r u r squared so basically i'm multiplying the first term with one so this is just one i'm multiplying with one and then here i have uh, the distribu distributive property of addition over multiplication. So basically I can write this as a sum over R, sum over S, P R, P S, U R, U S. Because each term in the addition will be uh, multiplied with the corresponding term in the second uh, addition, second sum. So I will have distribution of addition over multiplication. So here I'm using a distribution of 
addition over multiplication. This is just basic algebra. Okay, and then uh, in the next step, I will use also the distribution of addition over multiplication for the first term. So that's going to uh, give me for uh, u square bar minus u bar square. If I distribute uh, the first term over the second term, sum over r, sum over s, pr, ps, ur squared. And then the second term is minus sum over r, sum over s, pr, ps, ur, us. Okay, now uh, uh, so for this sum over r, uh, sum over s, p r, p s, u r squared, so I just want to uh, tell you that if this is uh, u r or u s, it doesn't matter. So let me note here that, uh, so let's note that we have sum over r, sum over s, p r, P S U R square. Well, R and S are going through all possible, all possibilities. This is the same thing as sum over R, sum over S, P R, P S U S square. It doesn't matter if I'm summing over R index or S index. It's the same thing. They're all going through all possibilities. So. What I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to uh, write the first term twice. So sum over r, sum over s, p r, p s, u r square. And then I will add the same thing, sum over r, sum over s, p r, p s, u r squared. So because I'm doing it twice, I have to divide it by 2. And then uh, in the second term, um, so let me move this up, okay. So uh, in the second term, I have a minus, and I'm going to divide this term by 2 and multiply it by 2. 1 over 2, sum over r, sum over s, p r, p s, 2 u r, us okay so multiply it by 2 and divide it by 2 so for this one i multiplied it by 2 over 2 uh, and here basically i'm doing the same thing so i'm uh, i multiplied it by 2 and divided by 2 okay so then i noted that uh, instead of writing the same thing twice, I could have written this as 1 over 2, sum over r, sum over s. So let me do this instead of writing this summation sign twice. This basically means I'm summing over r and s, uh, pr, ps, ur squared. And then the second term, 1 over 2, sum over r and s, p r, p s, instead of u r, I'm going to write u s because it's the same thing. And then I have minus 1 over 2, sum over r and s, p r, p s, 2 u r, u s. So you will notice that I, I keep doing the same thing, so I have 1 over 2, sum over r and s, p r, p s, in parentheses I have u r squared minus 2 u r u s plus u s squared. So basically this is nothing but 1 over 2 sum over r and s, p r, p 
ps ur minus us squared. So I have shown that u squared bar minus u bar squared is given by this expression 1 over 2 sum over rs prps ur minus us squared. So that is what was suggested in I. So this is basically what I see in I. So uh, I was successful in showing that that is the case in part A of this problem. Now in part B, uh, it says since no term in the sum can ever be negative, uh, this is going to imply u square bar minus u bar square has to be positive. So basically we can say that the terms ur minus us square is greater or equal to zero for all r and s values. Um, therefore we can conclude that u square bar minus u bar squared should be greater or equal to zero or we can say u square bar is greater or equal to u bar squared. Now, uh, if, if we have u square bar equals to u bar squared, this will imply a ur must be equal to us for all r and s. So that means you, me you need to have only one uh, only one value of u occurs with non-zero probability. So this condition would be satisfied, for example, um, so let's think about it. For example, u can be 0 or 1 with probability p corresponding respective probability p and q so that you would have only one value uh, of uh, u which has a non-zero probability. It can have a zero value with uh, a non-zero probability but uh, any other value it can have uh, has to be there is only one value uh, which is going to give, give us uh, this result so um, basically we have basically we have shown that the, the there is only one value of u with non-zero probability Okay, uh, so the last uh, statement is that this result agrees with that derived in problem 2.8. So let me go to problem 2.8. U square bar is greater or equal to U bar squared. I have reached the same conclusion here. U square bar is greater or equal to U bar squared. So this is uh, in agreement uh, with uh, 2.8 so problem 2.8 we have an agreement so there's uh, so let's let's go through what we said here uh, we are using the definitions of u bar and u square bar and the normalization condition to show that u square bar minus u bar square is given by this expression where the sum is over all possible values of the variable u. So u square bar minus u bar square. For u square bar, I substitute sum over r p r u r squared. For u bar squared, I substitute sum over r p r u r multiplied with sum over s p s u s, where the summations go over all possible values. Then I multiplied the first term with the normalization condition, sum over SPS, uh, and then I've used the distribution of addition over multiplication for the second term, so that it becomes sum over R and S, PRPS, UR, US. Uh, then, 
uh, I note that sum over R, I also use the distribution of the sum over SPS over sum over R P R U R square. And then I note that uh, it doesn't matter if it's R or S that I'm summing over for the first term. So I uh, multiplied the first term by two and divided it by divided it by two. And for one of the terms in the summation, uh, I have used S instead of R. So I have one over two sum over R S P R P S U R squared plus one over two sum over R S P R P S U S squared. And then for the second term, uh, I have used uh, again the multiplication by two and division by two. So that gives me one over two summation over R and S, P R P S, two U R U S. Then I recognize that what I have in parentheses for the summation is U R minus U S squared. So basically, uh, I have shown the first statement. And this has to be greater or equal to zero for all R and S because you have a, a square. So u square bar should be greater or equal to u bar square. Now, if u square bar is going to be equal to u bar squared, that means I have to have u r is equal to u s for all r and s values. So only one value of u must occur with a non-zero probability. So, um, Basically, what I have written here is actually not quite right. So uh, we should say that, uh, for example, you can be a one with probability uh, P. Uh, and uh, so I have P that is non-zero. So basically that's what the statement is telling us because u r must be equal to u s for all possible uh, values. So I either have uh, u r is equal to u s or I have the probability equal to zero. So you can see here um, u square bar minus u bar square can be zero if and only if I have uh, UR is equal to US or PR uh, or PS or PR is equal to zero or PS is equal to zero. So you must have uh, the probabilities are zero, then you will have U square bars U bar squared or you should have for each term UR is equal to US. So that's basically the main conclusion of this problem.